Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Field Trips. I am here, you know this gal, my lovely, beautiful girlfriend, Jennifer McGuire, Miss Southern Belle Fishing. And we're here back in one of my favorite places to fish in the state of Texas. We are back at San Luis Pass on the Texas coast near Galveston doing a little red fishing. She had a weekend off. I said, let's roll down to the coast, about to go visit my dad in Houston. So let's go do a little red fishing. We're out here looking for dinner, looking for some fish to cook up. Jennifer this morning said she wants to catch her first flounder. She has never caught a flounder. And I told her that, I don't know. I've never caught a keeper flounder in Texas. I've caught plenty of undersized. I'm always here in November when you can't keep flounder. So I've never really had a reason to target them. But we're here now in the spring and you can keep them. So we're gonna see, we're gonna be trying to catch flounder for her, but really we're gonna be red fishing. A lot of times I, I catch all my flounder on accident while red fishing. So red fish is the main target, except for trying to get Jennifer her first flounder. We'll see if we can get it done, I don't know. We're in a good spot. I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a second. And then, we're gonna, then I'll see you back when we catch the first fish. It's not gonna take long at all. No. Probably. <laughs> maybe for you. Yeah, maybe for me. That has, yeah. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right, guys, so we're out here at low tide. So we are fishing basically the beginning of the big marsh system that we like to fish out here. So at low tide, these fish are kind of forced out of the marsh and they're gonna be in the first few ponds as you get up into this maze-like intricate marsh system. Whereas at high tide, sometimes they'll be way in the back, deep up in there where you're slogging through shallow areas to get as far deep in the marsh as you can. Because as the water fills up more of the marsh, the redfish go up with it. But right now at low tide, those reds should have been pushed back out. And this is a pond right here that, that we know and like and have caught some good fish in. And it's basically the, the second pond that you hit as you come into the marsh system from the main channel. And the fish seem to kind of stack up here as that tide starts to approach low tide. So talk a little bit more about what we're going to be throwing, but I'm going to start off throwing the spook top water. It's cloudy still. It's low light. I think it's going to burn off here soon, but while it's cloudy and low light and still relatively calm, I'm going to throw the spook, see if we can't get some fish on top water. So this guys, is what I'm talking about. This is actually the Berkeley Jaywalker, not a spook. Spook's kind of like Kleenex, kind of like an all, all around term for a walk the dog top water bait. Uh, my favorite way to catch redfish other than sight casting them, but it's cloudy and the water's dirty. No sight casting today. So see if we can't get one on top water. Picked this up at Tackle Direct on our, before we came down here. And uh, the good thing is a lot of these oysters are about an inch under the water. So you, so you can't cast onto the oysters with like a jig head or something, but with the spook, you can walk this thing right over the top of them. God, I just, I, yeah. That, that might be a red bait. Jennifer's on early, early in the day. Oh, it's a flounder! Nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Yeah. Get your net, sit down, get your net. It's a keeper, for sure. Oh, uh, no way. Careful, just, oh my God, yeah it is. Easy, easy. Oh, oh. oh I caught a flounder! <laughs> I caught a flounder! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Jennifer said she wanted a flounder, and I told her, well, don't get your hopes up. I've never caught a keeper flounder in Texas. I mean, you make sure it's 15 inches. Don't kill it if we're not sure. Oh, that's 15 all day. Look at that, Look at that. keeper flounder. Incredible, babe. <laughs> Congrats, babe. So that is dinner all day. One of the tastiest fish that swims. Literally, all she said she wanted today was a keeper flounder. I told her, don't get your hopes up, but I should have known better. This is my first flounder ever. First flounder ever. ever flounder. And it's a keeper. Ew. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm ready to eat it. I've never got a keeper flounder in this state. And here Jennifer is, new to kayak fish in the marsh. Got a stud. Just doing everything I taught her. Yeah. Awesome, let's get that guy in the stringer. Sweet, we eating good tonight. 18 and a quarter. Okay. 
Hey. Good stuff, babe. That's so awesome. All right. Dinner sorted. I've seen a couple now, like, come up to the surface and eat something. I'm surprised they're not hitting the spook. That's a redfish. That was a redfish for sure. Good size one. We are surrounded by redfish, you guys. We're seeing them everywhere. Can't get them to bite right now. But there are some big ones in this little pond. Was a big one. I got something. Yeah? Yep. 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 Jen's on again. No, it's not. It's a flounder again. No way. I swear. It's not big enough, I don't think. Another flounder for Jen. Flounder number two for Jen. This morning, she said she just wanted a flounder. Oh, no. I think he's too small. Yeah, he's 13. 13? Yeah. So not a keeper, but still cool. Yeah, it is. You wanted one flounder, and there's two. First hour out here. There she goes. Look at that. Flounder number two. Super cool species. <laughs> they're actually born with both their eyes, one on each side. And then when they're real young, the eye migrates over and they have both eyes on the same side of their head and they swim sideways. It's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's so cool. Two I could one see day. it swim. I saw it swim up and grab it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I really was hoping it was a red, but I'm two flounder. Never caught a flounder. Caught two today. Yeah. That's Today's your day, day, babe. It's a good day. So we are seeing redfish, big ones swirl in this pond. Uh, I've seen an alligator gar come up twice, about a five footer, and Jen's caught two flounder. All just sitting here in the same pond, but this is kind of my low tide spot around here, and it's low tide, and there's a lot of activity in here. I really honestly cannot believe we haven't caught a redfish yet. But we're going to keep after that, so we're going to stay here a little bit longer, and then as that tide starts moving up, we're going to move on to some other spots, but there are fish in here. I just got to figure out what these redfish want. Throwing a handful of things, but but no bites yet. But we're gonna keep working at it. But in the meantime, Jennifer's new species. She's getting the flounder bite dialed in right now. Here's some commotion up in here, but it's shallow. I don't think I can get in this. The problem with this place is there are a lot of giant mullet that hang out super shallow and so a lot of times you end up on this wild goose chase chasing wakes and swirls that you just could have sworn were redfish and then you get up there and it's like a 25 inch mullet just giant 10 pound mullet up in six inches of water it's very misleading there's some good activity up in here by something pretty big. I see a tail swishing, but it looks kind of like a mullet tail. And this would be a lot of work to try to get up in here, but something spooked off these oysters pretty big. Or maybe not spooked, but it swirled. That's why I stopped here, and then as I did, see I see tails up in there. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there we don't go. <laughs> oh gosh, that was so exciting and then it wasn't. This, you guys, is not a redfish. That is a blue crab. It's a male blue crab, I can tell. I learned in Mississippi how to tell the difference. 
and he hit this spinner bait of all things. And now Jennifer has that flounder and we had talked about if we got a blue crab, trying to keep one or two and maybe do some blue crab stuffed flounder. Oh, and he just came off and left me his claw. He just shed his claw to get away from me. Well, kind of a cool souvenir, but not gonna be enough to stuff her flounder with. <laughs> Man, I've had plenty of crabs hit soft plastics and stuff. I'm working real slow, but never had one hit a spinner bait that I'm working pretty fast. And they're just winter our stuffed blue crab flounder. I was about to say that I'm gonna look up the regulation because I don't know the minimum size or the season or anything. So I was about to Google it. I don't want to take one illegally. But it looks like we'll be stuffing our flounder with something else. We got some shrimp. Probably end up doing that. I was really excited though because Jennifer was like, we get a blue crab. You know, if we see one, we gotta net it. And now at least I can prove Dory that I caught one. Sort of. I've been grinding, you guys. I've seen a few, but not that many. And uh, no bites so far. Zero bites. We'll just keep working. Basically, I came way up in here, deep into the marsh to see there's enough water, even though it's pretty near just after low tide. It's still deep enough for this to hold fish. And I've had some really good success here in the past, but last trip we came here and it was just a ghost town. And I've seen three reds, spooked three reds, but uh, still haven't gotten a bite. So I, I think there's fish in the area and they're just not feeding up in here. So I'm gonna work my way back out, meet back up with her, show her this crab claw, see if she's had any, any success while I've been gone. Since you've been gone. Yeah, we'll see. Oh my God. Yeah, yep. That's not the same one, but I'll take it. I'm a spook, babe. That one's a slot. Okay, now we got something going. It's upper slot. It's, it's pretty good with that. Oh. What the hell I did was hear it. Yeah, not a subtle take. <laughs> Finally, you guys, we've been grinding. You need to get it? No, I got it. We've seen some big reds. She's just not done. This is a good one. Seen some monstrous reds in this pond. We left it. We came back. It's been a few hours. And uh, I saw this red come up to the surface twice. And so I just said, there's no reason they should not be eating the spook. And there it is, a spook eater. Oh, look, even, even the birds are celebrating. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, there's a red like twice this size cruising around in here on the surface. I don't know what she's doing. Is that dinner? That's dinner for sure. So we'll add this to Jennifer's flounder. There we go. First keeper red of the day. First bite of the day for Rob and just explosion. That was insane. I looked at, I thought it was just another fish like jumping. Exploded <laughs> on the spook. But man, that feels good. Oh, 21 and a half inches. Texas Keeper is 20 to 28. Thing was loud yeah. in that spook. Absolute explosion. And catching redfish on top water just never ever gets old. Oh, and I'll take it. We've been working hard for these fish. And I was feeling real defeated. Jennifer got the two flounder early and then we went to a different area. No dice, nothing happened. And saw some big reds that just wanted nothing to do with anything. And then we came right back in here to the same pond. And like I said, I just saw a giant over slot redfish come up to the surface twice in a row, acting real weird. But I said, if they're coming up, maybe they'll hit the spook through the spook twice. And there's a keeper, not the giant I saw, but that's dinner. Put this on the stringer. And uh, I reckon I'm gonna throw the spook a little bit more. That was a good time. That was fun. Violent explosion. Just keep grinding. Maybe they're turning on. Feels like they're turning on. 
all day they've been just not biting, not eating. Maybe that just changed. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. I don't know what it is yet. Jen's on again. Killing it here at the end of the day. Good? Something good. No. Thread! Hey, that red! <laughs> Redfish. Redfish. Stay calm. Just get it. No, no, no. Come on. Southern Belle. Ah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Man, killing it at the end of the day. She just had a follow uh -huh. after that flounder and the next cast she hooked up and it was a redfish. On her H and H original spinner. Ow. She calls it her lucky lure. She always catches fish on this thing, whether it's brown trout in Arkansas, bass and redfish. Oh, that's a good one. That's a keeper all day. Yeah? Oh yeah. Look at that! <laughs> oh, that's a keeper all day oh my long. Gosh. Holy moly! Yeah, I had like a huge follow and I told you, I was kind of was like, I don't know what that was. It was big. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. Oh. Great job. You can measure it, but that's a keeper. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Measure it just How to many? 20 to 28 is keepable. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 21 and some change. Nice! Oh, That's <laughs> <laughs> so great. Oh. Right here at the end of the day, oh. another one. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm like thinking like maybe we should stay out here more. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Toss her in. Whoa. Whoa. Man, red flounder. We ought to try to smack you a wow. trout real quick and get you the slam. That would be epic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I was not excited. I was like, because the way, like, it kind of felt like it was just kind of gliding in me. I was like, is that another flounder? Nope. It's nope. not a flounder. Nope. I turned it off and moved it. Okay. Good job. I was like, I thought I hit it. Getting this inshore fishing kayak thing down. Yay. All right, guys. Well, not the killer banger day of inshore fishing that we were hoping for, but mission accomplished, main mission accomplished. Jennifer here, who my lovely assistant behind the camera, got her first flounder. She ended up catching like six flounder, and one of them was a keeper. And I've never caught a keeper flounder in the state of Texas, my home state. So we're super excited about that. And to me, if you're gonna cook up flounder, which we are, the way, like the quintessential way to do flounder is to do stuffed flounder. And now, confession time, I've never done this, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So no, I have seen it done before and I did a little Googling before this and we're gonna give this a shot. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make redfish stuffed flounder. Now tr people traditionally would do blue crab stuffed flounder. We don't have any blue crab. I came pretty close to getting one, but I figure we got the redfish. We're gonna do redfish stuffed flounder, kind of like a Cajun turd ducking or something. I don't know, but it's gonna be good. Now this is the hard part is filleting this flounder so that it can be stuffed. So now I already filleted the redfish. I'm not gonna show you that. If you wanna see that, there's a link up in the top right. You can check that out. If you wanna see how to fillet redfish, super simple. But this flounder, this is kind of a more intricate process. So now I've already cut off the head and the gut cavity. That's done. The next step before we can butterfly this guy open is to scale it. And the easiest way to take scales off any fish is with a spoon. You can use a butter knife, but I like to use a spoon. And basically, real simple here, we're just gonna go against the grain. And yes, I'm doing this in the bed of my truck because I didn't want to get my rig dirty. You can see there's no way to scale a fish without making a mess that I've ever encountered. Flip her over, same thing. Slippery little bugger. I think that'll do it. I think that's good. So we got at least 99% of the scales off of here. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually debone 
this flounder so that you don't have to worry about the bones so that you just you just got meat it makes it much easier to eat for whoever you're serving this to and now the flounder's got meat on both sides it's always got more meat on the dark side but there's plenty of meat on the white side underside of the fish as well but the first step to doing this is we're going to make one incision one cut straight down the lateral line of the fish it's really easy to find and now basically we're gonna separate each side of this meat from the bones. How difficult would you say this is? Like how it feels, like slicing it? Is it coming off pretty good? No, the meat's real tender, like real soft. That's real easy. This knife is not that sharp and uh, not really wasting anything. Yeah, it looks good. How white that meat is. Yeah, that's gonna be so good. So now we're cutting this to that dorsal fin, but not through. So there it is, that's the edge. Don't want to go too far, you're going to kind of screw up at least your presentation. I mean, it's still going to taste good. And I wouldn't be surprised if I end up screwing this up, but that actually, that first one turned out pretty dang good there. That's perfect. Okay, now we'll do the same thing on this side. I'll tell you this, guys, I was, I was really apprehensive about doing this because I've never done it. The neighbors are excited. This is going better than I really get, allowed myself to hope. It's not as difficult as it seemed. It was very daunting of a process on paper, but it's going pretty well. But once you get there, that's where you don't want to cut through. That's the edge of the meat there. So once you kind of see this like little shiny part, you're done. Okay, perfect. So this is going to end up being like a pocket that we're going to stuff, except most people would just stuff right here make the pocket, and then you gotta pick around these bones. We're gonna remove these bones, but first, we gotta get the other side done. So, like I said, not as much meat on this white side. You would really need a pretty huge flounder for this to be just a ton of meat on this side, but and since we're gonna debone it, this meat will be easy to get to, and it will not go to waste. Okay, that step's done. Okay guys, so we got it all separated. Now comes what seems like the tricky part. So. For this, you're really gonna need a pair of kitchen sears. Sears. <laughs> kitchen shears. If you don't have kitchen shears, you could get away with scissors, but you're gonna want some heavy duty ones. We basically need to cut through some bones. So I've got some shears here, but what we're gonna do is basically peel back both sides of this and we're gonna cut down the edge. Careful not to cut through the meat. And we're going to be left with just these two butterfly pieces of meat and we're going to cut and we're going to cut out this entire center bone part. If it sounds easy, it sounds wrong, you're wrong because this is not going to be that easy. I don't think. I don't think. I was surprised by the first steps, so maybe I'll be wrong. Let's see. Here's the open. Peeling back this as far as it'll go, peeling back the underside as far as it'll go, and then I'm going to take these shears I'm not even going to hesitate, I'm just going to cut right down this. Okay, and now the same thing on this side. It's like arts and crafts time here in the field trip's kitchen. And by kitchen I mean my truck tailgate. Because every step of the way I'm kind of like making sure on both sides that I'm peeling this skin, this meat back as far as I can so that I don't cut into it. Okay, once you get down to the tail part, you're just gonna cut straight across. We're not gonna eat that part anyways. And that is it. So those are the bones from your flounder, removed all in one piece. See the sun, sun shining, sun, sun, it's been a long day, folks. See the sun shining through it. Your boy didn't do a terrible job for his first time doing this. And now we are left with, with this, which looks weird. It's gonna make a lot of sense once we get to cooking this. So we basically got these two little butterfly pieces. Come here, we'll show them what it's gonna look like. You're gonna, you ended up with this beautiful, just two nice little pockets with no bones to worry about. Boom. For the first try, could have gone way worse. I want to say I nailed it, but I've never done this before, so there may be a time in the cooking process where I learned I didn't nail it, but it looks right. It feels right in my soul. I think 
we got it done. So I'm pretty stoked. I told Jennifer 50-50 we're gonna be eating chicken tonight, or I guess redfish. Nailed it. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go get cleaned up because I am so disgusting. Then we gotta go get a couple ingredients from the store. We will meet you in the kitchen in the Keystone Cougar RV. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make the stuffing, how we're gonna stuff it, and how we're gonna finish this bad boy off in the oven. It's gonna be fantastic. Thanks to Jennifer for catching it. This is gonna be good. Don't go anywhere, but I gotta take a shower. See you here in a minute. All right guys, hard part's over. We figured out how to debone and butterfly out our flounder. Now it's time to stuff this bad boy. So like I said, the normal way you would stuff this is typically gonna be with blue crab, maybe with shrimp. But we're gonna use the redfish that we harvested today. So first step, we're gonna cook this redfish real simple. We're gonna end up setting that aside while we get the rest of the stuffing put together. So with this redfish, I'm seasoning it with just some of this fin and feather rub from Traeger. I love this stuff, real simple. And we're gonna cook this redfish in some extra virgin olive oil in a pan, as easy as it gets. Just make sure this is cooked through, and we're gonna take it off. It's gonna take no time at all. Fish is done. Smells amazing. All right, so the redfish is cooling. That's done. We're gonna end up kind of breaking that up into the stuffing at the very end. The main two ingredients in this stuffing are gonna be white onion and celery. So we're gonna give these guys a pretty good chop, not crazy fine. We're gonna chop these up. All right, got the onions and celery chopped up. It's very emotional. <laughs> Catch and cook all of a sudden. Now. These onions and this celery, we're gonna be cooking in butter. <laughs> I'm not talking margarine, I'm not talking any of these knockoff weird things, butter. So flounder is a very lean fish, it can dry out, especially cooking it in the oven like this, and so you need to add some fat. So we're gonna cook it with good old butter. And I'm basically gonna use a little less than a whole stick of butter to cook down these onions and celery and the other stuff we're gonna to add to it later on. But first we're gonna melt down this butter, add the onions and celery. We're gonna let that cook for a good while until these vegetables are completely cooked through. They're really soft. You don't wanna be biting into like hard, chunky pieces of celery and onions. So we're gonna give this a little while and then we're gonna add some more stuff to it once it's almost done. All right, so these onions and celery are cooked down. They're looking good, feeling good. So now here towards the end, we're going to add some garlic. You don't want to add this too early because garlic has a tendency to burn. And when garlic burns, it does not taste good. We're going to go pretty liberal with that. Gonna stir that around. And I'm going to let that go for like 30 seconds. I'm going to add some fresh basil. Love basil. Then we're going to add some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce. So that's looking right. And now we're going to add in our redfish. We're going to toss that in there. Give that a stir, a little whisk. And now we need to add to this some breadcrumbs and that's what kind of makes it a stuffing. And as far as the number of breadcrumbs, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just gonna kind of add some, see what it looks like, and then probably add some more than that. Add even a little bit more than that. Okay, and now this is pretty much done, so we're gonna take this off the heat so it's not too, too hot to handle. We're gonna get our flounder prepped on the uh, on the dish. And we'll stuff this bad boy and then it's gonna go in the oven and I mean pretty much all the work's done. Of course. So this is what we're looking like. It's looking good. It's smelling amazing. <laughs> it 
it is hot, and I'm glad I did because I think it needs more breadcrumbs. It's a little too moist. But it, it's amazing. It tastes so good. The basil and the Worcestershire, and of course that redfish. Man, this is going to be good. Okay, stuffing's done. We're about to stuff the flounder, get it ready. Now, welcome to RV life. I don't have room for things like baking dishes, plus ovens and RVs are not the most technically advanced uh, appliances on the planet. So I'm having to use a cookie sheet. I'm just hoping this thing doesn't like overflow or something with juices, but I think it's going to be fine. But we are going to butter the cookie sheet, or in your case, you ought to be using a baking dish, really. But we're going to butter that first to make sure that uh, this beautiful flounder that Jennifer caught doesn't stick to the bottom. Because remember, that bottom side has got meat on it, and it's going to be amazing. So we're going to butter this pretty liberally. Then we're going to take the flounder. We're going to make sure this bottom meat is kind of pinched together. Making a nice little platform there. See that? See that? Oh yeah. Now we got this beautiful little platform. We're gonna add the stuffing. I'm probably about to burn myself. Jennifer tried the stuffing, by the way, guys, and she was rave reviews. You better make this for me again. I could just eat the stuffing, she said. Gosh, I didn't really make enough. This is gonna be good. Quantity here, guys, like I said, this is an experiment. You guys are learning along with me right now. I'd say just make extra stuffing because this stuff is good. You could eat it with a spoon. And then, uh, you know, if you have leftovers, just eat it. Kind of nice and evenly stuffed. And then we're just gonna lay closed our flaps. And really this should be like overflowing with stuffing. So I didn't do quite enough, but that's okay. You need some kind of seasoning. And to me, this is a very Cajun fish. So we're gonna go with Tony Sacheray's we're just going to put that on the top of this guy so that they're seizing on top of the meat, not just on the inside. This thing's going to be packed with flavor. This stuff is really good. Now we're going to cook this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. But I'm going to get the oven started, which is another process that involves me getting on the floor and uh, using a lighter and all kinds of stuff. So one sec. Welcome to RV life, folks. You gotta hit her just right. She's real finicky. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, we have fire. <laughs> Boom. And then she goes. Ooh. All right, guys. Moment of truth. I think it's done. It looks done. It smells so fantastic in here. Here's to hoping. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh that butter is sizzling. Man, it smells so good. Look at that, guys. Finished product. It's got stuffing in there. Could have used more stuffing, but I think it's going to be just fine. Especially just for the two of us. I think we nailed it. So, the way to serve this to your friends and family, or just to yourself, well, I guess if it's just yourself, you just start digging in off the pan, I don't know. But basically, we're going to cut this into, like, cross sections to where you get the stuffing, you get both sides, you get the bottom, you get the top, you get kind of the whole deal. And now, we decided that trying to transfer this whole thing onto a cutting board is a horrendous idea. It's going to fall apart, so I'm just going to mess my knife up and cut into this aluminum foil on the bottom. I think it's going to be fine. All right, Miss Jennifer McGuire is gonna do the honors of taking the first bite. Kind of falls apart a little bit on the plate, but a little bit of stuffing, a little bit of fish, a little bit of all the things. Mm. Is it good? That is really good. It's like real moist too. Perfect, that's mm -hmm. the butter. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, the flavors, all the flavors together, it just tastes so good. Good. 
Yeah. You gotta try it. Give me the right? camera so okay. you can try it. I'm gonna get like a big old hunk of meat <laughs> and then some of this red fish. It's like fish stuffed with fish. Whew. Passing the steam test right now. I don't care. Oh, yeah. It's so good. That's really, really good. She's absolutely right. It's super moist and juicy. That's that stuffing, all that butter, kind of steaming on the inside. It's basically being steamed from the inside out. The meat is just white, flaky, delicate. And that stuffing is, you could stuff anything. You could stuff me with that. I'd be fine <laughs> with it. That is so good. You guys got to try this recipe. This is the only way to cook flounder, I now know. And I didn't nail it, I'm sure, but apparently you can't screw it up. So definitely try this, you guys. Golly, that's going to... I guess you want to eat too. Sorry. That was good. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys. Well, success all the way around. Successful fishing trip. Jennifer got her first flounder. We are now reaping the benefits the spoils of war today. It was not the easiest day fishing we've ever had. We grinded it out, got a couple nice reds, and her first flounder. flounder. Yeah? Yeah, got a bunch of small flounder. Yeah. Hold it. We got just enough keepers to make this fantastic meal. So good, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, comment, tell me if you like these kinds of videos, or if you want more freshwater stuff, less catching cooks, more catching cooks, let me know. Thank you guys so much, I love you guys. See you next week. We're gonna enjoy this.